Hello friends. In the past videos, we have discussed about effect of water table on ultimate bearing capacity if your water table is in either zone 2 or zone 3. Now, in the present video, we will discuss the effect if your water table is in the zone 1. Okay. For that, let me draw the foundation again. Let us consider a footing. And again, while with me, just recall the terms that we have considered in the previous videos. So you will get practice. Okay. Let us assume this is the column footing. And this is what the level? This is the level 1 1. That is also a ground surface level. I am not writing again that, okay? I think for you it is clear. So this is what the level 2, 2, that means the level of foundation. And what about here? Up to certain depth, we will consider it as a level 3, 3. So from here to here, what is the depth? We will consider it as a width of the footing. And from here to here, what will say? We will consider it as a depth of the foundation. So in the previous classes, we have seen this is in zone 1, this is in zone 2, and this is in zone 3. Already we have seen, if your water table is in zone 3, it won't cause any effect. But if your water table is in zone 2, already we have seen how that will affect the bearing capacity. Now, in the present video, we have to discuss if your water table is somewhere here, in between level 1, 1 to 2, 2, what is the effect on the bearing capacity? So here I'll say effect of water table, effect of water table in zone 1 on ultimate bearing capacity. So before moving on to that, let us consider that your water table is in the extreme level. What is the extreme level? Let us assume if your water table is at level 1, 1. Understand? Suppose if your water table is at level this here, now tell me this complete is under submerged with water, isn't it? Level 1, 1, that means level 2, 2 is also under water, level 3, 3 under, also under water. That means throughout this step, your water is under, your soil is under submerged condition. Similarly, throughout this depth, your water is under submerged condition. So that's why which parameter we have to consider. So, if your water table is in level 1, 1 to level 2, 2, which parameter will affect gamma into D? Now, see, it is in tri state or submerged state, submerged state. That's why which parameter you have to consider gamma dash into T. Why? Because the complete depth is under submerged condition. Similarly, see, level 2, 2 to level 3, 3. This is also under submerged condition, isn't it? That means here which parameter will affect gamma into B? That means if it is under completely submerged condition, which parameter we have to use? Gamma dash. That means gamma dash into B. So, if your water table is at the ground surface, if water table is at the ground level or above, doesn't matter, isn't it? If your water table is at the ground level or above of it, your complete depth term and also your complete width term is under submerged condition. If they are under submerged condition, we have to use the effective parameters. Now, similarly, tell me what is the ultimate bearing capacity equation? CNC plus as your complete depth is under submerged condition, we have to use the effective value. What is the effective value here? Gamma dash into D into NQ. Similarly, your complete width is also under submerged condition. So here also you have to use the effective parameter. That means gamma dash into B into N gamma. So this is what if your water table is at the ground level or above of it. Okay. Now, let us say if, if water table is in between if water table is in between ground surface to 
ground surface to level of foundation level of foundation according to the technical term what we have discussed here ground surface we are talking about the level 1 1 level of foundation we are talking about level 2 2 so either you can say your water table is in between ground surface to the level of foundation or else you can say your water table is in between level 1 1 2 level 2 2 okay so let me draw the uh, floating diagram and also the foundation level and then we will decide let us say this is the level 1 1 and this is the level 2 2 and this is the level 3 3 okay and let us say from level 1 to level 2 2 what is this depth here d from level 2 to level 3 3 what is the depth here b let us assume that your water table is at a distance of let us say this is the water table level that means from this complete below is under submerged condition let us say this water table is at a distance of d1 from the ground surface understood water table water table is at a distance d1 from ground surface now from this you can tell me depending upon this d1 and d we can judge whether it is in a zone 1 or whether it is in a zone 2 when can we say this d1 is in the zone 1 wherever if your d1 if it is less than depth of the foundation then your water table is in the zone 1 only isn't it that's what we can observe here now if you see this from ground surface to the d1 your soil is in the dry condition that means from ground surface to the d1 we have to use the dry unit fit from d1 to d that means from here to here what is the distance from here to here what is the distance d minus d1 isn't it that means in the portion d minus d1 your soil is under submerged condition that means in this portion you have to consider the submerged unit fit so similarly that write it down the F equation q u that is nothing but a c into n c plus gamma d into n q gamma into d when if your complete depth is under submerged condition gamma dash into d when your complete depth is under submerged condition now what is happening some part is under dry condition some part is under submerged condition up to how much depth we are having the dry state d1 so up to the depth d1 consider the dry unit weight that I will represent it as gamma into d1 plus the remaining what is the remaining depth d minus d1 it is under submerged condition there which term we have to use effective weight f x sorry submerged unit weight so d minus d1 the remaining you have to take the submerged unit weight multiply by the n q plus now see the width term if your water table is here it is mean that whatever the point to take it below everything is under submerged condition that means if your water table is in zone 1 your zone 2 is under completely submerged as your zone 2 is under completely submerged then here you have to take the effective parameter okay that means how the third term will change the term will change it like as this complete under submerged condition you have to use the effective parameter that means here it is gamma dash into b into n gamma so this is the bearing capacity if water table already i am writing again if water table is in between ground surface to level of foundation once again i am repeating if you simply by heart the values or by heart the equations definitely in 70 percent of the students will commit the mistake remember only one thing if you want to include the effect of water table wherever there is a water table there consider the submerged unit weight wherever it is in dry state consider the dry unit weight remember only this point and depending upon the water level rewrite the equations in the exam itself 
that will give you the correct answer instead of blindly following the equations okay hope it is clear everyone okay in the next video we will solve a problem based on this model thank you